Did you see that weird VHS tape they found? I think I found a whole bunch more of them. Now I'm not saying they're haunted, but there is definitely something off about them. Really? We still have VHS tapes? Yeah, do you think we should watch one? Yeah, let's do it. Everybody, it's Jim Blevins here again, uh, getting into the fall, 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 fall. Point of view of uh, someone just strolling along the trails, just enjoying nature and its finest works. Uh, you know, there's a nice, nice bridge. What the? There's someone over there. What the? Hey, hey, buddy. I've seen you around here, but what are you, what are you doing? Hey, I want to have some words with you. Ain't fair. Ain't fair. Ain't fair. Say you're doing this so the people who live around here and enjoy these trails. They're just trying to enjoy nature. You're out here trying to give them a scare, scare, hurry. Where do you... Where... That was, uh, weird. Yeah. Yeah, with watching that and reading some scary history stuff lately. You're into history? Well, there's this guy who presents his history really well. It's really well made. I didn't even know you liked history. Well, yeah, it's just the way he does it is just so good. You have to watch it. Let's watch it. Blank moments in history. <laughs> Hello, it's so wonderful to see you all again. In this episode, I'll be telling you about a scary moment in history. <laughs> Let's get started. January 1348. Trading galleys from Corfa have reached the ports of Genoa in Venice in Italy. But trade goods weren't the only thing these galleys carried. Inside these boats were little rats, and on these rats were little fleas, and these fleas carried something even tinier, a bacterium called Yersinia pestis. Now, this little devil can make people very sick very quickly, and spreads faster than butter on a hot toast. <laughs> So much so, in fact, that by June of 1348, it had spread to France, Spain, Portugal, and England, oh no! Germany and Scandinavia, and also Russia, were hit by 1351. Yersinia Pestis, this little fellow right here, 
is very deadly to humans like you and me. After someone contracted this bacterium, it only took five days to die from its effects. Oh, no. So with all these countries being infected, you could imagine the death toll would be quite high. Well, it's estimated that Yersinia pestis killed nearly 50 million people. Very scary. Today, we refer to this moment in history as the Black Plague. And this has been Blank Moments in History. If you love the show, tell your friends about us. I do so love company. <laughs> you know, I used to be a world champion. In what? In boxing. If you're so good, why aren't you boxing now? Well, they told me I was too good, and they disqualified me from boxing. What? Yeah, they disqualified me. All I could think, is this guy serious? Um, no way. Yeah, there's this video that I saw from a recent boxing match that someone took. It's really good footage. We should watch it. Okay, let's do it. What's up guys, welcome back to In The City. Terrence Crawford, a three division world champion and still current WBO welterweight champion, remains undefeated with now 34 wins and 25 knockouts. After successfully defending the WBO welterweight world title against Jose Benavidez Jr. Back in February when Benavidez accused Crawford of ducking the potential match, which Crawford said to not be true, there's been a constant bad blood between Crawford and Benavidez. Proposal or anything about Team Crawford fighting this guy. No. Thank you. With such an intense buildup, with constant bashing and knockout threats throughout fight week. Fans thought they would see a fight at weigh-ins Friday, when Benavidez shoved Crawford and Crawford responded by taking a swing. Came fight night and ultimately the knockout threats Benavidez were sending couldn't be backed up. Oops. In the 12th round came a hard hitting knockout. Terrence Crawford did exactly what he said he would do. A whole fight, short uppercut. Then he follows up to finish him with a right hook. Benavidez was hurt, still hurt from that first knockdown. And Terrence Crawford with a big win right there. Congratulations Crawford. All right guys, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of In The City. The Capital Humane Society's Pylock Pet Adoption Center, where you can find your next baby girl, your next Aaron, or your next furry animal companion. Each adoption comes with spaying or neutering, microchip registration, and a health exam that is included in adoption fees. So stop by the Capital Humane Society's Pylock Pet Adoption Center, located at 70th and Highway 2, to find your next furry friend. We understand sometimes you need to stay late on campus. We also understand crime rates are higher at night. That's why UNL is taking care of their students by offering the Husker Safe Walk. It's a free walking escort service that can be requested at any time while on campus by calling 402-472-2222. Call 402-472-2222 if you feel unsafe or would like to request a Husker Safe Walk. You look frustrated. Is everything okay? Well, yeah, Premiere Pro keeps crashing. It might be the new update. But I have a project due soon, so I don't know what to do. Oh yeah, I've been there. It happens way too often. 
Have you emailed customer service yet? No, not yet. Have you ever seen Rants with Robin? No, I haven't. But is that one of the shows you keep recommending me to watch? Yeah, I have an infinite amount of recommendations, and they're all good. Well, it better be. Seriously, they are. Hey guys! Um, welcome to Rance with Robin. I'm your host, Robin. Back for another funsy episode. I know you all can't wait to hear what I have to say next. Every week you're just itching for me to rant about something new. So don't worry, I'm here. I got you. Today's episode is going to be about working retail. Don't be an idiot. I have worked retail, brace yourself, five years. Five. I'm 24, right? My poor little sad soul. And I do work for a pretty well-known company that sells lingerie, intimates, all that good stuff. That's not the point. The point is stuff I've experienced, stuff that I feel like more people should know. So we're just gonna dive on in. Number one. One of my favorite things is when people come in to my store and they're like, do you work here? Well, let's see, Brenda. Um, I'm wearing the uniform that we wear. I have a measuring tape. I have my headset and walkie-talkie on. Do you think I like to just put away underwear and fold underwear all day for fun? Yes, I work here. What can I help you with? I'm obviously not that rude. I am very approachable, I think. Number two, every item that we have has what we call a birth date on it. It'll have the month and the year that that particular item was manufactured. So don't come in and be like, oh yeah, I just bought this like last week and it just doesn't fit right. I'm not afraid to pull up the birth date and be like, mm, yeah, this is from 2010. You didn't just buy this last week. I'm not stupid. I wasn't born yesterday, but good try, good effort. Number three, gift with purchases. We have them a lot. And it'll say on your coupon and on our marketing everywhere, while supplies last. So if we run out, that is not my fault. It is while supplies last, that's it, okay? Don't yell at me, I don't make the rules, I can't go in the back room and stitch you up something. Literally, there's nothing I can do about it. Fourth on the list, back room. Do you have this in back? Can you go check on this for me? Everything we have is out. Oh, well, are you sure? I live here. I am here all of the time. I know our merchandise. I know what we have in the back. I know what we know. I could go on and on, but for time crunch purposes, I'm gonna keep it to a minimum. Also, as we're approaching holiday time, just a friendly reminder, we are here to help you. It's the holiday spirit. It's the holiday season. So just be nice. That's all I really have for today. Um, catch us next time on Rants with Robin. And we'll rant some more. And it'll be fun. It'll be amazing. You're going to love it. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Don't be an idiot. Are you seeing anybody? Well, I was. Almost. The day went pretty bad. What happened? I'd really rather not go into specifics. It was, it was bad. She said I was out of her league. Something like not wanting to date a celebrity. I tried to explain to her that really no one watches the show that I'm on, but I really just couldn't explain it the right way. Well, there's a show that you can relate to down to earth where there's a bad date. Have you ever been on a bad date before? Nope. Like this? Yeah, perfect. So the first part of the documentary got real popular, and it turns out people really like aliens. We also got a huge budget increase and got these cool translator chips. It's not easy being this famous. Hey, Warba, hey. How, does my, how does my Tinder bio sound? Uh, hold, hold up. Yeah, Tinder? Yeah, I figured with how popular we're getting, I'd get some chicks on my side if you sniff my drift. For, first of all, never say that again. Second, uh, what, what does it say? Gerb, 1,584 years old, a rad dude from a planet far, far away. Hit me up if you want to experience something that's out of this world. I like it. 
It's seductive. I mean, I got a dinner date tonight, so I guess this thing works. Do you even know how to cook? I don't know. I think I'll just make some toast or something. <sighs> Feeling really good about this date. Coming to Earth gave me a new burst of newfound energy. Dude, she's here. What? I'm not ready. Big surprise. Go tell her I'm getting ready. Hey, you must be Nadine. That's me. All right, why don't you have a seat? It's like, look at the food. Sure. Why did an alien? I don't know. I guess dating humans started to get a bit boring. I figured I should shake things up a bit. So how do you like your toast? <laughs> it's okay, I guess. Oh, good. I was hoping it was nothing less than okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's definitely something. Like, like a train wreck. Or, or a plane wreck. A plane crashing into a train. Are you okay? Yeah, I just don't feel so good. <laughs> I have to go. Oh no. Phony. I know exactly where he's going. He always teleports here. Come on, this way. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Bad. Okay. You know it's not too late to fix things. I think it is. So, seen any good movies lately? Uh, no, not really. Listen, I think she really wants to finish the date, so you should just go back and talk to her. I think I'll just call it a night. Okay, well, if that's what you want to do, it's your call. Let's go home. Hey. Hey. You wanna just go home? I'm feeling kinda of sick. Oh, yeah, sure. Hey, do you guys have lenses here? Yeah, we keep them in the closet. Why, do you like them? <laughs> I love them. Oh my god. I think the date went well. Aside from some minor inconveniences, I'd say it's one of the better ones I've had. Okay, okay, how's this, how's this? War Bob. 1,597 years old, I can be your star. And if you want me to do something, I can plan it. It's a work in progress. Did you know I was raised by raccoons? Pretty crazy, huh? Okay, first, he's a boxing pro, then he's a history buff, and now he's a raccoon man. You don't believe me, huh? Yep. Well, I, I wasn't raised by raccoons, but I know a guy who was. It's still hard to believe. Well, just, just roll the clip. You're watching Six Minutes. Today, we speak with the infamous Raccoon Man. Stay tuned. We've all heard the story of George Jetson, the Nebraskan feral man who after being abandoned as a child, grew up in the wild. With the help of a raccoon family, of course. He then lived in the wild until the age of 17. Discovered right here in Lincoln, Nebraska in 2012, George began to assimilate and, for the very first time since his discovery, he has agreed to an interview regarding his unusual circumstances. The video taken by the woman who discovered George is a confusing one. Hey! Who's there? After knocking himself unconscious, George was taken to the hospital where he eventually woke up. After six years, George has developed his speaking skills and agreed to sit down with me for an exclusive interview. So, your name is George Jetson. That's a very interesting name. Yeah, that was the only name I remember off the show I used to watch when I was little called The Jetsons. Aside from the name he gave himself, Meet George, Jetson. George remembered very little about human life. I remember being human, but I didn't know enough to knew what human beings were actually like. He didn't feel comfortable rejoining society. I was afraid of how humans were, and so I avoided them. However, between urban sprawl and the allure of cold, leftover garbage, Jetson found himself in city limits, um, hiding from humans. I would have to say, it was starting to get hard 
living out in the wilderness, going through dumpsters were a lot easier than finding berries in the forest. So easy, in fact, that George still goes through dumpsters to this day. It's full of dog food. Yet after everything, George <laughs> refuses to be pessimistic. It is what it is. I made the best out of what situation was given to me. Join us for part two of the Raccoon Man story, where we speak to George about how he's adapting to normal human life. Next time on Six Minutes. We have a new University Health Center, now including the UNMC College of Nursing. The new and improved University Health Center offers everything in one place, including a full-service pharmacy and physical therapy. If you're feeling stressed, talk it out with counseling, or relax and unwind in the all-new Zen Room, now located at 550 North 19th Street. There's lots to see and do at the University of Nebraska State Museum. Be sure to visit our new temporary exhibit, The Museum Builders, which explores the history that led to the building of the University of Nebraska State Museum. Accompanying this is also an escape room, which features the history of fossil collecting in Nebraska. For more info, visit museum.unl.edu. Have you ever cheated on a test? Well, yeah, a while ago, once. When was this? It was way back in high school. How'd you do it? Well, it was in a math class, really hard math class, and I wrote the equations on my leg, and I'd look down at my leg every once in a while to get the equations. Well, what'd you get? I passed, I think. I got 72. Wow, maybe you should have just studied. Hi, I'm Chris Hansom, and welcome to another episode of Dateline UNL to Catch a Cheater. And on today's episode, we're doing something different, where we're going to sit down with a well-known cheater whose identity we have concealed for obvious reasons, but they decided to come onto the right side of the law for once in their life and show us kind of the ins and outs that we can use to catch cheaters in the future. So thank you, and thank you for coming on the show. All right, so my first question today is, what what kind of got you started with cheating? Like, take me into the mind of a cheater and let me know really what gets you in that mindset to do such a thing. So my cheater days started when I saw school as strictly a business. They don't actually want us to know these things to use in life. They just want to know if we can pass a test. So why dedicate my time and energy into studying when someone else can just do it for me. And my second question is, uh, what were kind of some of the methods you used um, in your time as a cheater now that you're reformed? My favorite was cheating in a group. And if this group is not your friends, sometimes you have to use a little extra charm and sell them the fact that them helping you cheat is good overall. And uh, when you cheat together, you're less likely to get caught. You're not gonna have people who are out to get you caught. And so you're all in it together. So for my last question for you, we're running out of time. Um, what kind of advice would you give for people that used to cheat or are trying to stop cheating so that they don't exactly get hit with academic dishonesty? I think you should just go cold turkey and just stop. If you're one of those cheaters that writes things on your arm, instead of writing down the answers, write, I'm not going to cheat. If you like to put your headphones in, just say in your recording, I'm not going to cheat. Everything you have to say to remind yourself is, I'm not going to cheat. 
and then that's what you got to do. You got to put in the work. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show and enlightening me into the mind of a former cheater. And I'm definitely going to use that in these future episodes to really crack down on those scumbags. So thank you again very much for coming. Have you seen Tricks of the Trade yet? No, I haven't. Well, you'd be surprised what you can learn from it. Like? Tricking someone into having a false sense of security so you can con them out of their entire life savings. Well, that doesn't sound like something that's right or something that I really would want to learn about. Oh, well, what about card tricks? Welcome back to Tricks of the Trade. I'm Michael Walcott, a.k.a. Clint Diesel. Now, last week I talked about how we're going to, uh, you know, or last episode, I talked about how we're going to, you know, choose a mock. Well, I found a guy. Well, let me tell you about him. He's a college student, just some dumb kid studying. He's off guard. He's got his guard down because he's busy looking at his little notes or whatever, talking about math or whatever. And we're going to go uh, pull, a little, uh, pull a little con on him, all right? Let's go. Hey, 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 what's up, pal? How you doing today, huh? Want to see a little card trick? I guess. All right, all right, all right. Well, let's see here. Let's start off with an easy one here. Pick a card, any card. See the card? Yeah. All right, what is it? What is it? Tell me what it is. It's a, it's a jack. Jack of what? Of uh, whatever it's a that jack is. Jack of clubs. Yeah. All right, all right. I, I see you don't play cards much. Often. I see you don't play cards much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we're going to just... Uh... <coughs> Sorry. Ah, uh, a little, little bit of cough there. We're just gonna switch this all around here. Just gotta mess things up real, real nice, real nice. And, uh, is this your card? Wow, it is. Crazy, you see that? Jack of clubs right there. Uh, jack of clubs right there. What's at stake for you? Well, everything to gain for you, nothing to lose. I got the Susan B. Anthony right here. You got some nice little uh, eagle with the moon on the back. Got a couple jokers here. And uh, Queen of Hearts. Let's go Queen of Hearts. Okay. All right. So we got that. Here we go. You need to pick out the Queen, and you're going to win this Susan B. Anthony, all right? That's worth at least $3. All right. Here we go. Uh, you ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Follow along. Follow along. All right. All right. There we go. Where's the Queen? Ladies and gentlemen. He won, but we're gonna go double or nothing right now. We're gonna go double or nothing. Do you even have another one of those? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. I deal almost exclusively in Susan B. Anthony coins. They got value, man. They got value. Most people don't know about the value of a Susan B. Anthony. They think it's only worth one dollar, but you could probably sell it for three on the uh, coin market. You know, pick a card. Those 1979s are real good. Ladies and gentlemen, you got it again. We're gonna go uh, one more time. All right. Let's see if I can't. Uh, you want to grab that for me? Sure, can't just keep that. Uh, we're, we're gonna go double or nothing again. Whoop, whoop, whoop. All right, there we go. You almost had me for a second. Yeah, almost had you for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get you this time. That's for sure. Not that you don't have me right now. All right, pick your card. Oh, I'm sorry, man. You got the king of hearts. I won twice in a row. I think I would remember if it was a queen and not uh, a king. I, I think you're playing. No about that. Let's go. Well. Better luck next time, I guess. I uh, took a calculated risk, but I guess it was just a bad math day. So uh, join me on uh, the next episode, and I'll, uh, I'll teach you a foolproof con that works 100% of the time, 70%. <laughs>